Hello there, boys and girls. The King has returned for some more Final Fantasy VII Remake. Happy to be with you all today. Hope you're having yourselves a fine Thursday. Sorry, just taking care of a couple things here real quick. And okay, we're ready. How you doing, Jacob Ironside? A good to see ya. Let's see, where did we leave off with this bloody game? Uh, let's see, it says... Uh, Ominous Shadows... It's kind of weird, my cursor's drifting a little bit. That's annoying. Hello, Israel. How you doing? Look at this tool here. Hey, brother. You from around the way? I guess. No man with a big gun strapped to his right arm. Pretty set up shop somewhere in the neighborhood. That depends. Clever. Smell an opportunity to make some scratch to you. Five hundred. Two hundred. Three. Whatever, man. Let's find somewhere quiet to talk. Walk with me. Can you put a shirt on, please? What about yourself, Gord? I'm doing well, nice Jacob. You looking at me? Playing some Final Fantasy. Uh was doing a little bit of script writing a little bit ago. We'll be jumping back to that after this. Uh, I, <laughs> silly me, I thought my next Rings of Power video would be of the shorter variety. But now that I'm starting to really dig into the dialogue, uh, I, I put it this way, I'm on page, I'm on page eight and I'm about 20 minutes into the episode. So if that tracks, then that's 24 pages for the whole episode, because it's, it's the lengthiest one so far. So, yeah, it looks like this next video could end up being as long as the other ones. Because the more you pay attention, the more you start to see big and little things that are really stupid. Like the show contradicting itself literally within two seconds of saying one thing. It's, it's pretty amazing. I told you before. That depends. Oh yeah? You wasted my time. Shinra's time, you mean? <laughs> Shinra knows better. Than Are they? Did this guy seriously pull that tiny knife at when I've got shit. this? What's up, Jalen? He pulls this tiny little knife and he's been walking behind me. Where it's like, oh wait, he's got this ginormous Buster sword. Did that guy just do like a Homer Simpson on me? Why you little? <laughs> this is an attempted back alley murder. Exactly, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Try this. Looking good. Oh crap. Big man with a big gun for an arm, right? Uh let's we go high potion. Ooh, that was close. This guy's kind of annoying. Wow, some hero 
you turned out to be. Oh wow, he actually got me. He got me, partner. White bear, how you doing? And now you have to talk with the black priest, exactly. <laughs> You know where the bastard's hiding, don't you? <laughs> you risen be a force. Heal up real quick. Okay, he's weak to fire. Him with it. Uh, I'm sure I probably should go ahead and heal again. It's a tough little battle. Ash, dang, y'all. Some fire on him. Alright, just me and this tool. There you go. So if they weren't Shinra, then not my give Hoodlum D the fire. Get some rest. Your BF's about to get effed in the B. Not bad, Mark. There might be more on the way. All right. Okay, go ahead and use another potion. Welcome. If you hear about the Doom Rats, watch dealt with them already. You gotta take care of business quick, buddy, or someone will beat you to it. Eh, makes no difference to me, though. We're still good. As long as you bring Tifa with you next time. Eh, they're all simping over Tifa. Uh, his hairstyle says it all. Yeah. I'd, why? <laughs> Just why? It's like, dude, why do you do that to yourself? Or why'd you let somebody do it to you? My husband decided to go to the state. Nothing 
Alright, let's check our map here. Uh. Oh, gotta go up there. Hello, lady. Welcome home, honey. Took your sweet time. Psych. Uh, <sighs> Are you gonna let me in? Is this how the Japanese this? think Americans talk to each other? Or there's. Right to the point then. Yeah, I used to have a hairstyle like that. <laughs> the extremity of it is part of what makes it bad. For not getting you on the mission. Or not. What do you think it is? A proposition. Nailed it in one. Gonna have to ask you to keep all this a secret from the others, though. It's a personal matter. Something I need to sort out tonight. Tonight? Tonight, you and me, together. I want you to come with me to the Sector 7 plate. I'll give you the details on the way. That's fine by me, but don't you have a pretty big day ahead of you? I do, but if I don't deal with this now, it's only going to get harder. Anyway, I can count on you, can't I? Hmm. Oh. A down payment. Ooh, neat. It's a summon. That's cool. Summoning material grants you the ability to call a powerful ally to your party's aid. A single summoning material can be set to a weapons material slot. When facing a formidable enemy in battle, the entity slumbering within a set summoning material may begin to stir and the summoning gauge will appear. Cannoli! How you doing, good sir? Now we'll be back before morning, in case you were planning on traveling light. Make sure you've got everything you need before. Are you all set? Uh, I guess. Awesome. Meet me at the station after dark. Don't be late. <laughs> She's got red eyes like Tifa. Just another job. Huh? Huh? Tough break. They changed the times. Last train's already left. Which is why we borrowed these bikes. Need a lift to the plate? How did you guess? Easy. You've been acting weird. Like talking about one thing when you're obviously thinking about something else. Yeah, and don't get me started on all that pep. All right, I'll give you that. But how did you know I wanted to head topside? Was I talking in my sleep? What else did I say? No, we just figured you wanted to see your parents, that's all. Nailed it, huh? Yep, right on the head. So, seeing as we don't have any family of our own, how about you let us be a part of yours for a bit? You know, spread the wealth. <sighs> Are your parents still around? Huh? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay then. Guess you're all invited. Here's to awkward family reunions. Yeah! <laughs> well, alrighty then. What about clouds there, so I know, right? I take it you boys have your brand spanking new IDs? Yes, ma'am. Then let's lay down some rubber. Try that drive. Okay, you got it. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Bigs and wedge. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm not going plate side for the reason they think I am. Cloud gets away with the weird hairstyle because he wears a sleeveless turtleneck. We all know those are like, like you can't you get cooler, cooler yeah. clothes than that. That was wishful thinking. Deep down, I know it was my fault. 
Yes, Israel, lay down some rubber. That's not a strange statement. This video game is full of weird statements, but lay down some rubber is not uncommon. She is every pit of his body every day, no matter what. <laughs> Something may be bleeding. Oh no. Thoughts on Killian Murphy being approached for James Bond. I... I just... He's definitely got the acting chops, but... He would need to bulk up a bit, and he's... He's a bit old for it. I kind of feel like he's a bit old for it. He's 47. That's true. Like, I could see him in a James Bond movie, but I would prefer he played like the villain. Yeah, I, I would love to see Killian Murphy as the villain. Like, that'd be great. Uh, oh yeah, we can accelerate. This guy hasn't bothered me at all, and I'm just gonna, like, kill him. <laughs> and she's all cheery about it. She's like, oh, you murdered that guy. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Haha, <laughs> casual, casual murder. Yay! Are they tying to two Joker bomb? I don't know. Apparently murdering guys on a motorcycle is like a real panty dropper. Yeah, I just I don't I just I don't see Murphy as because I mean like we've seen you know Killian Murphy like with like, up against like Christian Bale and Batman and I just he just looks so slight and frail by comparison to someone like even that yeah I just I just don't see it not as Bond In the world? Pay attention to the road like you would your bloody hair. <laughs> your body hair. <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, he doesn't have to look, like, jacked, like, superhuman jacked, but he does need to be fit. He needs to be extremely fit. If you're gonna play Bond the way Bond has, you know, been played, he needs to look fit. And not, like, skinny fit. He needs to have some muscle on him. Who's this tool? Yeah, you can do it, Whitey. Bond versus Whitey would be pretty fun. No! 
I still think they were onto something when they almost cast Cavill as a, villain, as a Bond. And I still think he could do it. Not much of a Yeah, he invests his dreams, exactly. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan is... He's, def he's definitely up there amongst my favorites. Brosnan's kind of who I think of when I think of James Bond. I think his look was perfect. He had the look, he had the charm, he was fit. He had good one-liners, all that. I wish he had gotten better movies, but yeah. I, I like Timothy Dalton also. Dalton was great. I like Timothy Dalton. Dalton was kind of the first one to play kind of the more... Uh, the more novel version of Bond. If you, like, if you read Casino Royale, which I recommend, great book. Uh, the Dalton Daniel Craig version of Bond is kind of closer to... Yeah, it was definitely much more serious, but that's honestly like the Bond novels. They, they're at least the early ones. They are more serious. Casino Royale is very serious, and it's fantastic. Like, I know a lot of people like to rag on Daniel Craig's Bond, and while granted, I I think Craig's movies are a bit hit and miss. I don't hate him as Bond. I just I think he lacks some of the charm as part of the problem. No, I I, I agree, Whitey. I, I do not like Roger Moore's Bond. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Roger Moore is my least favorite Bond. I do not like him as it. Is there a Bond novel for every movie? Uh, no, I don't think so. There are a lot. There are a lot of Bond novels, but uh, oh my gosh! But not for every movie, no. And only the Ian Fleming ones count, anyway. I agree, Whitey. This this has gotten really gay all of a sudden. Who is this tool? At least they're calling him, man. Uh, I can use a potion, but... Let me see, do I need one? Actually, it didn't look like I can. Yeah, Casino Royale and Skyfall are awesome. Love it! How you doing? Good to see ya. Roger Moore in the Saint series. I I didn't know that. I haven't seen any of the Saint series. I'll tell you who's low key a great Bond. Who's not, I mean he's not actually a Bond, but. If you haven't seen the OSS 117 movies with uh, the dude from The Artist, they're great. <laughs> At least the ones I've seen. They're really funny. I enjoy the heck out of them. 
I mean, they're basically, they're more Austin Powers than they are Bond, but uh, they're, they're really funny. No. He got me. Now that I understand the battle a little bit more, it'll be fine. It's good to see you too, Love It. Well, hello. Who's this? That's what we say when Love It can. Well, hello. Oh, Inside Out 2's trailer is out? Oh boy. <laughs> Inside Out is the most overrated freaking Pixar movie. I am not a fan. Hey! I agree, Jesse. He is the worst. Come on, get up on him. Did you hear that? He said, I know you love it too. He's talking to you, love it. I never said Up was the most overrated. I said Up was a little overrated because I don't think the... I don't think the f second half of the movie is as good as the first half, but it's not anywhere near the most overrated. It's Up's a good movie. Up's a really good movie. It just peaks early. But Inside Out is easily the most overrated Pixar movie. Gotcha, Whitey. What you say, Kanoi? Uh, we are doing the Incredibles in two weeks. Nice. Yeah, I've got that one. Uh, I've got the Incredibles in April. The Incredibles is awesome. Incredibles two, not so much. Yeah, I've got Incredibles is gonna be, I think, a 5 p.m. show. I think I've got uh, Jacob. I think I've got for that, and uh, amateur analyst. I think it's gonna be there, and maybe one more. Most of the Pixar sequels, other than like uh, you know the Toy Story, the early Toy Story ones, most of the Pixar sequels are kind of meh. Funny enough, the one Pixar sequel, not Toy Story, that I actually kind of liked was Monsters University. I actually really liked Monsters University. I thought that was kind of good. A lot of people crapped on that movie. I actually think it's alright. Like, Finding Dory, I thought was okay until you get near the end. I think the ending to it is awful. But, uh... And Toy Story 4 is complete garbage. Had enough? Don't be absurd. 
As if I could ever grow tired of your company. Why all of a sudden are we just having a conversation with this guy that's been trying to kill us? Oh my gosh. What in fresh retardation is this? I'm gonna read some of y'all's comments as soon as this is over. I don't like that they're not letting me play any of this. You could at least give me like a quick time event or something. That was, I'll say this, if you're all talking about Zack Snyder, some of the stuff he said, have you all brought up the fact that uh, Snyder said he wanted the the prostitute mother of Rorschach, he wanted like the mother to be topless in front of the 12-year-old version of him? I'm like, that is freaking gross. That's creepy. I swear, it's not like Zack Snyder's simps are just ugh. They're some of the worst. You failed the test. What test? Driving. Zack Snyder said more people probably saw Rebel Moon in the theater than Barbie. Um, not what on like a random Tuesday. <laughs> this not even close. Apparently, there is a conspiracy that Violet had a different father. Oh. Oh, would you look at that? It's the end of the ride. I bet you look into that. Like that's beyond being edgy. It's just downright being perverted. Biggs is neck just told me that Wedge is the bottom piece. <laughs> I know, Cannoli, I don't I don't understand his vision. and I'm running on fumes. Don't worry. We'll top you up soon enough. Now let's roll. Normally I would be like really, really like focused in on like what like the characters are saying in the story, but the story's kinda goofy in this, so I'm like, yeah, if I get the general gist, I think I'm okay. <laughs> Plus, they all say, like, really funny things. Plus, this is just, like, a little the side mission thing. This gate. Mind doing the honors? <sighs> What is she talking about? I just pulled a lever. Y'all say the weirdest stuff. Oh yeah, Whitey, I was telling everyone earlier. I had thought my Rings of Power 3 skip script was probably going to be shorter than the other ones. But uh, 20 minutes into the episode, I'm already on page 8. It's a lot dumber than I thought. <laughs> I thought maybe this episode wasn't quite so bad. I mean, it's still, I mean, I knew it was bad, but the more I'm digging into it, I'm like, holy crap, this is a, t this is just, this is, maybe it's not just as bad yet, but it's getting there. Because it's really, it's mostly bad, bad character work. Yeah, even Lofty, exactly. If you lose Lofty, oh my gosh. It's just when I, when I, like, the initial watch of episode three, I was like, okay, it's not good, but this, this is probably the best episode so far. And it still might be, but now that I'm actually digging into it and paying attention to the screenplay, it's just little bits and pieces here and there. I'm like, that's dumb. That's dumb. This is nonsense. Characters are contradicting themselves. Every other line. This is so retarded. Galadriel is an insufferable C word. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll say this: it's it's the hardest episode not to not to just start swearing in because holy crap, Galadriel is so insufferably bad in it. I'm like I'm trying to think of like I literally had to write an appeal for clean adjectives to use for her in the script because I'm like I'm running out. I'm really running out of ways to describe this woman. That don't venture into synonyms for the female anatomy. She's so awful. Go in through the back door when the coast is clear. The signal will be obvious. Cats. Once the lights come on, it's go time. Did he just say that to the cats? Time to go. I've only liked about two Snyder films, but here's a question. Nolan versus Snyder, who comes up at... Oh, Nolan's way better than Zack Snyder. Nolan's a legitimately good director who's done a couple of bad films. Snyder is a legitimately terrible director who's done a couple of good films. I, I, I would take Nolan easily over Zack Snyder. It's not even a contest. Nolan knows... Nolan's good. And he is, he's, like, even his bad movies are at least ambitious. In a good way. Like, Interstellar and Tenet are not good movies. But I do enjoy them to a certain extent. But, uh, I think Inception is fantastic. I think Inception is, of his high concept films, I think is really, really good. Um... I think Memento's really good. I think the prestige is fantastic. We'll be chatting mom up in the kitchen. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of with you, Israel. Nolan's bad films are better than Snyder's best outside of maybe Watchmen. Cause like three, I mean, 300's fine, but it's cause it's dumb fun and it's kind of, it means to be dumb fun. So it's kind of an inoffensively goofy movie. But uh... I need you to grab his Shinra ID. But yeah, it's like, yeah, I know I should do Batman Begins, song. Dark Knight, uh, The Prestige, <laughs> Inception, Oppenheimer. Those are five legitimately excellent movies. You know, it's I mean, Batman Begins is probably the one with the most flaws out of those, but even it's really, really good. Uh, the Prestige gets better the more I watch it. But it had a Spartan kick. Exactly, Shield Wall. And welcome. Good to see you. <laughs> That three-story tall miniature building they blow up in Inception is crazy. Yeah. Or the hospital they blow up in the Dark Knight. That's great. Yeah. I, oh, and Dunkirk also. I think Dunkirk's a really good movie. for not getting in touch sooner, but... Well, Jalen, your taste sucks. <laughs> Jalen, you don't have the best taste. I'm sorry. <laughs> you like Die Another Day, so... Yeah. Our two tickets to my play. Looking forward to seeing you both there. Jesse Raspberry as the princess. All right. So who's this dying person? <laughs> Your opinion card should be revoked. Good to see you, Shield Wall. Jeff, who dies. Yeah. But yeah, like Dunkirk. I think Dunkirk's really good. Dunkirk, I have issues with, but I still think it's really good. No, not here. I think Dunkirk. The like my issues with that is I think Nolan's dislike for CGI actually actually hurt him in that one because like like when they're on the beach and they're supposed to be like over what is it something like 400,000 soldiers they're supposed to be or even 100,000 it's like uh, there's obviously nowhere close to that and it's really glaringly obvious so uh, 
I'm like, dude, just CGI the people in there. It's it's from a distance. It's fine. You can do it. It's no big deal. Don't be hating on 300. That's racist to Spartans. Yeah, well, I think the Greeks deserve it. Dunkirk looked like... I can't say it looked like a made-for-TV movie because there's some sequences in Dunkirk that are spectacular. So, like the aerial sequences in that? Oh my gosh, they look good. And I think the sound design in it is spectacular. It's just, you know, it obviously it doesn't have characters. It's more of an immersive film, which, you know, is fine. It's just, it does lose a bit on home rewatch. You know, I don't think it loses as much as it... it I mean, granted, it depends on, probably depends on your home setup. But, uh... It's theater experience is significantly better than the at-home experience. Okay, where is the card? How dare you, pumpkin? Yeah. Where's the stupid ID card? Not done here yet. A uh, decent made for streaming war film is Greyhound. I've never heard of Greyhound. Three hundred is pure superficial. It's it's visual. It's it's eye candy. That's really all it is. But it's otherwise a pretty goofy movie. This is what I've been waiting for. It's entertaining though. I don't think I'd rate it particularly high. Is the Thin Red Line any good? Yes. Thin Red Line is really good. Thin Red Line is a very interesting war film because it's it's kind of it's very existential because like you got a lot of like inner monologue stuff that's and it's but it's done well. But uh, yeah, I I really liked the Thin Red Line a lot. I really liked it. I was actually on. Um, I was on a stream with uh, Lance. Eat as much as you like. What's going on, Boosh? How you doing? And uh, Enemy of the Gates. I still need to watch Enemy of the Gates. I actually bought that fairly recently. So I need to watch that. Greyhound is about destroyers escorting merchant ships from America to England versus U-boats. Ooh, that does sound cool. 300 is awesome. Eh, I think it's fine. I wouldn't call it awesome. It's fun. But it's kind of dumb fun. I would, I don't think it's anywhere close to awesome. I watched it and I was like, yeah, it was a good time. It's a popcorn movie. Like I would put 300 as far as quality, like maybe a notch above something like Jurassic Park 3. Which I know that sounds weird because a lot of people are like Jurassic Park 3 is terrible. I think Jurassic Park 3 is also kind of dumb fun but it, it's but i would call that a bad movie that's fun whereas 300 is actually an okay movie that's fun but i don't think it's anywhere near an awesome film i think it's like it's fine it's fine it's not a movie i ever felt inclined to like rewatch over and over again what's your favorite jason statham movie uh ooh, that's a good question um Does he are we talking Jason Statham like anything he's in or ones that he's the star? Cuz if it's the one if cuz if it's one like he is the star of, I'd probably go with uh I'd probably go with Snatch. I think Snatch is really good. Uh if it's simply one he's in, that's probably a tougher call because I like that. I like. Uh, I actually really like the Italian job. I think the Italian job with him and Mark Wahlberg and all of them. I think that's a really fun film. But uh, yeah, if he's the star, I I definitely would say Snatch. Snatch is awesome. But if it's just a movie with him in it, it's kind of between that and The Italian Job, probably. I really like The Italian Job. It's so much fun. Granted, I haven't watched it in a little while, so I probably should go back and rewatch it, but... And you know, I've seen Snatch fairly recently. But, uh... Yeah. 
It's it's between those. Draw a pee pee on this guy's face. <laughs> on this poor dying guy. <laughs> it's like, alright. Time to draw a wiener. My dad. He was a maintenance suit. I already went up to this suit. It didn't have it. I like Jason Satham in the OG Transporter and Safe. Safe was very nobody like, but better in my opinion. Oh, really? I need to watch Safe then, because I haven't seen that. Um, I it's been a long time since I saw the Transporter. Like I I need to rewatch that to know what I feel about that, because it's been a really long time. Are you stealing from the dying kid? I missed. <laughs> I think Wrath of Man's actually pretty decent. Not a great movie, but I liked it. It's like a 6 out of 10. It's pretty good. I think the one is terrible. I didn't like the one. I did not care about that. But I, I, is he in that? Because I know that's the Jet Li movie. Is he in that? Uh, Is it a compliment or an insult for me to say I think Nolan might never do a film as great or better than The Dark Knight? I mean, for one thing, you're. I mean, not everybody agrees that that is his best film. I'm not even positive. I think if it's his best film, but uh, I mean, it's basically. I mean, Israel it depends on exactly how you see it. See you, love it. Thank you for stopping by. I mean, it really. I mean, it's definitely a compliment to The Dark Knight. Uh, I wouldn't call it an insult. I mean, if somebody peaks at a certain point, they peak. So what? I'd forgotten he was his foil. I just, I remember watching the one and thinking it was stupid. I didn't care for it. That was just kind of dumb. Wasn't a fan. He's also, I'll tell you the movie if his actually really want to see that I've heard is really good is uh, the bank job I've heard that's a really good movie I would like to I would like to watch that I hated the dialogue in Wrath of Man yeah some of the dialogue was an issue but I I thought it was fine I, I mostly enjoyed the film okay like I watched it once and I was like I'm not sure if I like this or not then I watched it again I was like okay it's 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 okay But at the same time, I have to admit, I was watching that while I was at work, so. I know our taste is very different, Jalen. I've known that for a while. <laughs> That's obvious. Need to hurry up. Yeah, what even am I supposed to be doing? Well, at least I can walk a little faster. Oh, there's the indicator. Durr. Wow, I just needed to walk well, over there. Oh my gosh. Sensor? How long has it been since you even performed? Uh... A lot of people really rely on Jesse. As a stagehand, though, right? Jesse cooks their meth. One of those anywhere. So why not come home and get a job at the Sector 8 Theater? Uh, I'll think about it. You know, I'd really love to stay in I hate games that throttle your walking speed. I do too. Yeah, well, Especially yeah, just at specific that intervals. Some of your famous mm. pizza. So good. Sure I can't tempt you with some more? Maybe just a couple slices, Mrs. Ark. What? Hey, I'm, I'm Did you ever see you Kiss of the Dragon? Uh no, I did not. That fat guy certainly ain't on meth. He's not, but the guy who voices him, uh, he was in Breaking Bad. He was one of Jesse's friends. Pigs ate nine slices. Yeah, I have not seen Kiss of the Dragon. I did see the Beekeeper, which is really dumb fun. 
gonna use this like the beekeeper is objectively bad but I actually hope they make a sequel to it because I had a good time watching it even though I couldn't stand his co-star oh she was horrible so it's gotta be me who goes in Jesse don't need a job she's gonna start an OnlyFans make a hundred K a month she probably could you've seen the streaming movie from 2016 spectral it's an issue I have not why is 19 afraid of 20? Because 28 to 3? Okay. I'm only eating two! Two whole pizzas, you lotto! <laughs> How is PETA in the beekeeper? Uh, Josh Hutcherson is basically just kind of playing like a Jake Paul without the boxing. I, I mean, he does it good. He does it fine. I mean, he's you're meant to think he's a... You're basically meant to think he's a hateable little twerp, and he does it well enough. I mean, look, the movie's pretty ridiculous, and it's kind of... What's unfortunate is the movie starts off fairly grounded, and then gets really out there. Like, like gets kind of like John Wick with uh, brighter colors. Like, some of the villains that are also beekeepers, are, I think their design is awful. But I still had a good time watching the movie. It, it was... I'm, I'm kind of amazed how much bad that movie has, yet I still kind of liked it. Happened while Jesse was doing a show with the gold saucer. What do you care? No, I want to hear it. But yeah, I, I, I kind of want them to make a sequel. And it looks like it's made enough money to where it probably will get a sequel. Didn't cost them a whole heck of a lot to make it, and, you know, it's... I would say that I don't think that the sequel will release in January. Some of the effects were rough and the acting wasn't great, but it was alright. Yeah, some of the acting was terrible. I, I thought Statham's co-star is awful in it. I couldn't stand her. She said, I mean, she was like, her acting was CW levels. It was terrible. Didn't you say Mahler's favorite movie? Yeah, as far as I know, Mahler's favorite movie is The Prestige. I'm, I've heard him say that a couple of times. I know I've heard him say it on Open Bar, and I know he has said it in EFAT before. But yeah, The Prestige, I'm pretty sure is his favorite. Oh, you're talking about Spectra. Oh, okay. I, I, I haven't seen it. Must reach cat need Chinese food <laughs> but was she bangable uh, his co-star no <laughs> that's the other thing she wasn't even good eye candy she wasn't even good eye candy don't tell Jesse about this little chat okay when she gets pissed she gets punchy well no promises he's serious cloud she'll beat the shit out of us not my problem. This guy. 40 minute budget, made 151 million. Hey, Think they broke what even? Yes. Eye diabetes? Well, white bear, come on. Iabetes. That's what we call it. Just need to get past this gate. Wait. Oh, you watched Prestige showed it to your dad? Yeah, it is fantastic. Yeah, I watched it. You and I is we were talking about that movie a couple weeks ago and I rewatched it right after, yeah. Prestige gets better and better the more I watch it. It's pretty excellent. Looks like someone beat us here. I don't think it was. Well, you asked if it broke even. Just I didn't, but it's it more than broke even. It made profit. It worked. It more than broke even on a forty million dollar budget. Uh, 151 million is a pretty nice hey man, profit. Is that way? I, I mean, way? even if you go the full two and a half time roll, uh, you're looking at 51 million dollars profit. That's really good for a, for a low budget movie, a lower budget movie. That's pretty dang good. That that's sequel worthy. Do I own them? Of course, I own the Prestige. I own all of Nolan's movies, even the bad ones. I own every single Nolan movie, and every, like, my favorite directors, I generally own everything. I don't, I mean, The Prestige, yeah, it does, it definitely doesn't get talked about enough. Although, like, if you go to IMDb, it is one of the higher rated movies on there. 
I can handle this. So it's, I guess yeah, it's underrated as far as con like conversationally, because yeah, it's it's almost like it's the movie on his resume that you almost have to remind people was Nolan. Like it's almost like people forget he directed it. You can use that vending machine over there to stock up. I'll, t I'll tell you the other movie that Nolan did that's highly underrated is Insomnia. It, yeah, exactly, Cannoli. Right there. Insomnia is so good. I don't own every movie from Tarantino. It's my favorite. I own all of Tarantino. Could go a few rounds before the main event. Man, I get really hungry when I'm nervous. But yeah, I... Uh, Insomnia is so good. That's that's such an underrated film. Yeah, I would say I would say after after Logan, Prestige is probably my favorite Hugh Jackman. Well, I don't know. He did Prisoners also. Uh, hmm, that's a tough call. But yeah, I would say those three are his best performances. Prestige, Prisoners, and Logan. Those are his, his three. Yeah, he, Michael Caine's great in it. We should do a show for a tournament of best directors of all time. I mean, that'd be kind of hard to do because, I mean, you would not only need to pick the directors, you would need a panel of people who had seen all or most of their films. That's a lot. I mean, that's a huge order right there. Although, granted, I very much want to do kind of a director series. Uh, but I think doing it as a tournament, I would almost have to do that solo unless somebody had absolutely seen all the other ones. Snyder will just end up winning. What's <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. How do you beat Zack Snyder? Oh yeah, Mike, Michael Caine's... He's an all-timer. Well, I can't... Well, hang on, Israel. He's not great in everything. Because he was in Jaws the Revenge, and that is one of the worst movies ever. Oh my gosh. Jaws the Revenge is so stupid. It's such a stupid movie. I mean, it's not his fault or anything, but it's kind of amazing looking back. It's like, oh my gosh, he's in this? We're the backup. At least I'm pretty sure he, I'm pretty sure he's in it. Yeah. Enough to get a vantage point, then we go to town on him. Yeah, he is a British treasure. Yeah, Michael Caine is in it. Okay, I was right about that. Hey. Yeah. That movie's painful. So, what did you want to talk about? Jaws the Revenge is like <laughs> Jaws the Revenge is so funny how stupid it is. They literally, they literally fly from that little area of Amityville Island, which is probably in the New England area, I would assume. I'm not going just to look for work. They fly like hundreds of miles, maybe even th like over a thousand miles south, and the shark literally follows them. Like they flew, and the shark ends up there. Hero, huh? The shark tracks them Isn't for hundreds of miles. <laughs> it's yeah, so retarded. So I won't be back for a long time. <laughs> Guess not. Oh my gosh. Who Guess thought not. that was a fun? Who thought that was a good idea? Just promise me one thing. When we're older. And you're a famous soldier. If I'm ever trapped or in trouble. Well, yeah, the Brits they they train them class they they classically train their actors. That's why. That's what heroes do. They save people. Please. Yeah, I mean Daniel Day Lewis. I think Daniel Day Lewis is, in my opinion, I think he's probably the best actor of all time. His range and his in his ability to be convincing is second to none. Uh. Yeah, Michael Caine's great. Uh, Gary Oldman, one of cinema's best chameleons. Love him. I might argue Gary Oldman might be the best actor going right now. Because he, he, I mean, he's been in plenty of bad movies, but he's good even in bad movies, honestly. Gary Oldman's almost, he's practically never bad. I heard you're having second thoughts. 
I know we have to think big if we're going to make a difference. <laughs> Once the sharks get the taste of blood, they'll follow you to different climates, up rivers, into sewers. Amazing animals. I feel trapped. I think I'd have to go with Gary. Yeah, Gary's... Uh, Gary Oldman's amazing. Love Gary Oldman. And he's a likable guy outside of film as well. I, his Oscar speech is one of the few I enjoyed watching. Like, in the like, I used to watch some of the Oscars a little bit, but uh, just to see who won, he had one of the few Oscar speeches that I actually appreciated. It was a very gracious one, wasn't he? In True Romance, oh yes, he was. His his performance in True Romance is one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Because he played Drexel, the pimp. Hey, oh, Gary Oldman's great. <laughs> He's so great in that part. He could Whitey. I mean, he kind of... I mean, he's close enough in, uh, in True Romance. But yeah, his performance in True Romance is j unbelievable. I love, like, even the story of how... He took the role because I don't think he read the screenplay. He basically just... They offered him the role and he's like, well, what is it? And he goes, well... And he's like, what's the part? And he's like, you're basically playing a pimp who thinks he's black. And he's like, I'm in. <laughs> Sounds good. I think the only time I enjoyed somebody winning an Oscar on the show is when it was Kobe. <laughs> I mean, I was happy that Kobe won an Oscar for him. That's great. He won for a short film. Take that, LeBron. Do you have an Oscar? No, you've got Space Jam 2. One of the worst movies ever. Well, page one of them, Whitey. He'll always have page one of those books. You can't expect him to do... I hope his bio... I, I hope his autobiography is called page one. He'll read them one day. I should do a worse sports movie bracket. I mean, it's more fun to talk about bad movies in long form. Trapped in a library, but you're... Yes. Yeah, yeah, LeBron LeBron could be in the Time Enough at Last episode, but when his glasses breaks, he's like, Hallelujah! I don't have to read forever! Where would I put Denzel on the level of the guys we mentioned? I mean, Denzel's great. Denzel is one of the best American actors. I love Denzel. I don't think he has, like, the range of somebody like Gary Oldman or Daniel Day-Lewis or anything, but, I mean, he's excellent. He's excellent. He's maybe a notch below that. That was an odd camera angle. I feel like he acts in the movies he definitely should be in. That's a way of putting it. Jalen, that's that is a surprisingly good pull by you. Edward Norton is a fantastic actor. I wouldn't say that's like the best performance ever or anything, but uh, it's, a, it's definitely a great one. It's a dang good one because Norton and Primal Fear is pretty outstanding. If you weren't so like I, I lament the fact that he's so difficult to work with because I'd like to see him in more stuff but uh, 
The best performance I've ever seen is Daniel Day-Lewis and There Will Be Blood. That's just... That is such a phenomenal performance. It's so good. And Day-Lewis, the thing is, he puts on performances on that level quite... He, he, was, he put those on, like, all the time. And yeah, I agree, Cannoli. He took Gangs of New York, which is a pretty average movie, and he made it good. I, and it's funny, I'm shocked at... When I see people put that amongst their favorite... Uh, their favorite Scorsese movies, I'm like... I mean, I don't dislike the movie, it's fine, but I'm like... I actually think it's one of his worst directorial efforts. I think, like, the battle sequences... I think the editing is awful. It's so bad. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to save him. He's being chased by dogs. Brad Pitt is underrated. He's a great actor. People think he's just a pretty boy. I, I mean, I think he's kind of shaken off the pretty boy thing from his youth. But yeah, he's he's a fantastic actor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, come on, that was pretty hardcore right there. Think I ran off the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a show, man. If only the ladies loved you that much. I'm glad someone's enjoying themselves. <sighs> but yeah, Gangs in New York is very watchable because of Daniel Day Lewis. He's so good in that movie. Like, even though I've only watched the movie probably, like, three times, I've, re I've watched scenes of his from that movie, like, numerous ones. Oh, did he? he did, did one scene change games in New York? Oh, that's interesting. That might explain a lot, then. I mean, I don't know how that factors into the editing room, but who knows? Was Phantom Thread any good? Phantom Thread is excellent. Phantom Thread's really good, and he's his performance is fantastic in it. The original movie was over three hours long with a very different tone. Well, dang. We got cheated then. Screw Harvey Weinstein. Well, don't do it willingly. You know, let's get out of the room with Harvey Weinstein altogether. You're better off. Alright, let's high potion this. Are those walking Johnson guns? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what a Johnson gun is. Although Johnson gun, that was my nickname in high school. Nah. Gord, you don't play with your Johnson gun. <laughs> well, shit. It's not, it's not play cannoli. I take it very seriously, I assure you. No, not you again. I don't like this guy. How did he try to learn Lord of the Rings? Like, make it? Are you talking about when he wanted to make it into one film? You know what I want. A second dance, just the two of us. Oh no! This guy is so gay. You turned the key. 
Me <laughs> can only know what a jump to gun is. It hungers to be set free. I mean, oh, and I'll just say to the credit of Miramax, Miramax let they they let the movie go. Like they made the suggestion, well, eh, we want to do it in one movie, and they're like, we're not doing that. And he's like, well, okay, you can shop it around. That's fine. So they at least, so at least Miramax let it go. But yeah, that's. The idea of doing Lord of the Rings in one movie is repulsive. I'm just as fast as I ever was. Oh, okay. Uh, your material has improved enough that a more potent spell is available. For example, in the case of the fire spell, the potency increases from fire to fira, and finally to the most powerful firaga. To access the more powerful spells, press right or left with the command selected. Yes, continue. Yeah, I know all that stuff. No escape. Now, the Hobbit movie should have made been just one movie. Yes, it should have. Ready? <laughs> I told you we were gonna push it past the red line. You know who this guy's haircut reminds me of? Do you remember like Chris Jericho, like in the early 2000s, like when he first went to WWF. That's who he reminds me of. After rewatching the trilogy, I think I agree. Fellowship's probably the best one. Yeah, it's... Especially... Especially, uh... Especially when you uh, to factor in the uh, the extended editions. Fellowship is so good. Oh shoot! Come on! Let's high potion this. The only way to watch Lord of the Rings is the extended edition period. Yeah, once you've... Like, I still very much believe in the idea of watching the theatrical versions first. Pay attention. I hate to tell you, Jalen, you're like the only person who thinks that way. Pretty much everyone else agrees. Extended editions are better. And they add tons of enjoyment. I love them. Gosh dang, that's kind of annoying. Oh, Here we go. Let's cross slash. I'm used to being the right person when it comes to- I, I hate to tell you, you're like never the right person when it comes to this. Satisfied? <laughs> With such fleeting pleasure. Have fun on that island. <laughs> To which you and I Peak subjectivity. 
Uh, why can't Chris Jericho here die already? <laughs> I don't think they nerfed Gandalf to face the Witch King. The Witch King is supposed to be extremely powerful. The Witch King is genuinely supposed to be an extremely powerful being. Well, Jacob, or not Jacob, uh, Israel, Saruman's death in Two Towers is freaking awesome. They only screwed up his death in the theatrical version. The extended version, his death is great. It's actually better in the movie than we get in the book. Because in the book, I'm... If I'm not mistaken, in the book, I think Grima still kills him. But it's in the Shire, he kills him. God damn it. I think him doing it atop the tower and him falling off the... Uh, falling, him falling off of Orthanc onto his own wheel spike. Oh, that's so good. That's freaking cool. He dies in the Shire. Have you never read the book, Ezreal? Yeah, there's a whole sequence, like, okay, so... After everything at Mount Doom, when they go home to the Shire, the Shire's under siege. Like, there's literally a whole sequence called the, the Scourge of the Shire. And Sauron basically took it over. And it's so like, the four main hobbits have to encourage the other hobbits to rise up and fight back. And yeah, Sauron ends up dying there. But yeah, that's where Saruman ultimately dies. I'm and, and frankly, I'm glad they left that out. I, mean, I I get the point that Tolkien was making with it, and I think in the book it works, but in the movie it wouldn't have worked. In fact, the vision that Frodo has in Fellowship of the Ring of the orcs taking over the Shire that was kind of their homage to it. And who are they? The first guests to the party. Another avalanche cell. Our holier than thou friends from the old guard. Uh, yeah, the the movie death for Boromir is much better. Lately, they've been a real pain in the ass. Till now. Boromir is one of the best characters in that movie. So then, why are they here? Boromir is a fantastic character. Ever since our cell got labeled too extreme, though they're the ones running around with Millspec gear. Word is they cut a deal with Wutai, promised them all the materia in Midgar, apparently. Think there's any truth to that? You tell me. Sometimes I think we're the only ones who've realized the war's over. Okay. Mission Sean Bean had the best death I can remember. Oh, his his death and fellowship is done excellently. It's definitely the best of the trilogy. Looking a lot more crowded now. Security's out in force. I probably put Theoden's right after that. Theoden's has done well too. So, uh, but Boromir's hits just a bit harder. Oh, okay. We're supposed to come here. There we go. One thing I can see casuals not liking the films for our plot conveniences like the Army of the Dead. I think so, I'm going to say it about like... I don't even think you have to be a casual not to like that. I don't think that was good to... Be, I, I mostly don't like the Army of the Dead uh, being that overpowered. It's I don't mind the concept of the Army of the Dead, but they ultimately end up functioning kind of like a deus ex machina. And... If we're being honest, Gimli's suggestion that, hey, why don't we hang on to these guys for just a little while longer? It's like, yeah, you probably should. But. Come on. Not my 
The biggest thing I dislike about the Lord of the Rings movies is Aragorn being a reluctant king instead of seeing it as his destiny. I don't know. I actually, I kind of like that being... I like that better, to be honest. Are we seriously doing I kind of agree with the notion that the best kings are the ones that don't necessarily want the power. That's that part of what suits makes them most suited for power is that they don't necessarily long for it. I I like that about Aragorn. I think it's done really well. And that's not that's not a knock on the book or anything. I think the book does its thing well too. But I don't know. I don't mind that at all. I, I like it. It's it, it gives him a really good arc. It's not safe here. Which is basically why they did it in the first place. They wanted Aragorn to have that as his arc. That he starts reluctant, and he grows into it, and more and more he goes from being reluctant to fully becoming the leader, to ultimately becoming king. I, I like it. I think a lot of the changes that Jackson then made were really good. Some, some changes weren't good. Well, yeah, and that's that's why it worked in the book is because he saw it for he saw it as his duty, and I I'm fine with that. That's why I think the book did his. Uh, they obviously didn't do wrong by Aragorn. It's great. It's just I I don't mind it being different in the movie. I think it's done pretty well. I hate answers like that. Where are we going? When we get there, you'll know. Um, we're literally running together. You could tell us in the conversation. I really find that kind of dialogue annoying. I can't be the only one, by the way. Let me ask you all that. When, whenever you're watching a movie or playing a game like this, and it's like, hey, where is such and such? Or what is such and such? And they're like... And they're like, well, they basically, they just find some contrived reason not to tell. They're just not going to tell you for some stupid reason. Well, okay, then. You'll know when we get there. It's like, you could just freaking tell us now. Unless there's a good reason not to tell us. Freaking tell us. I hate dialogue like that. Especially because it's becoming more and more pervasive. There's actually a part in the episode, this new episode of Rings of Power I watched where... They literally do it three times in one conversation. It's so annoying. The ending from Fellowship where Boromir dies and Frodo remembers Gandalf's words and Sam tries to swim, Frodo saves him, and they hug. One of the greatest endings ever. Yeah. Should be somewhere around here. It's, uh, it's such a good ending. The way the music plays on those things. Howard, I, I, I Howard Shore's music I also for it. Here, it's the best musical play. score in any movie ever. Harris. It's the best ever. Mm -hmm. huh? what do you mean, Lord of the Rings trilogy's music is the best of all time. <laughs> this is gonna be Wait, fun. Uh, 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 that ending makes me almost cry. Psh, almost. Bor Boromir's death gets me every time. You coming all this way with me. I have no issue admitting that that movie makes me cry. It was funny, when we were doing Cannoli Show, I was on the part two one for Fellowship of the Ring. I was literally like watching the movie at work and having the hardest time not tearing up. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm at work. People are going to look over like, why is he crying? What the heck? They're trying to do. Is this? Are they like trying to do like a Top Gun type thing here, with this music? I mean, they're not quite flying, but they're doing parachuting. I think. Wait! Give me a minute. No. Why you have to be such a hard ass 
bro. I ain't your bro. <laughs> Something, something, danger zone! Yeah, sorry Israel, that's just wrong. Theoden's speech is way better. It's not close. It's not close, <laughs> Theoden's speech. That moment at Pelennor Fields. It's so good. I wish I could have done more. Just got hurt. You did enough. You took one for the team. Be proud. I don't even think... I don't honestly even think that Aragorn's speech is the second best of the trilogy. It feels like we're flying high these days. <laughs> now, more than ever. I kind of feel like Theoden gets the best speeches, the like, right. more... He gets a couple of the best speeches. Because I think his, uh... Like, where is the horse of the rider? I think that speech is up there. That's so good. Sam, yeah, Sam's speech at the end of Two Towers is phenomenal. No, I, I still think Theoden has the best one. I think Theoden's is the best. Sam's, I would probably put second. After all, I'm only a little sore. <laughs> it's cool. We'll go together. I think Theoden's Where's the Horse and the Rider is probably my num maybe my number three. And then I'd probably go Aragorn's as number four. I think Jesse and Biggs made it back safe. I guess. Cool if we check on them? We'll pass by their places anyway. Sure. The only movie that dialogue was funny in that kind of dialogue was Big Trouble a Little Town. Tell me I can take yeah, it's like if you have a good reason not to tell somebody something, like you're making a joke of it or so. Okay, fine. You were not the first to provide the data I requested. However, it is possible for you to purchase my new materia. But you've got to make a good reason for holding back information, because it needs to make sense for the characters to do it in the first place. Uh, auto cure. Okay, cool. I'll take it. I plan to develop more material in the future. Together, we can harness enough power to take down Shinra. I'll keep repairing more battle intel reports, which I hope you will assist me in completing. Well, alrighty then. What is up with his running style? This is Big's place. I guess he hasn't made it home yet. Guess not. Big's and Wedge. Hope he isn't worst casing it again. He's got Somebody should be named Luke. Worrying about all the possible outcomes till his head hurts. Wouldn't have guessed. And when he worries, I worry. <laughs> anyway. By the way, everyone. Jesse's. Twenty-four subs away. That's it. Twenty-four subs from a thousand. We're getting there. Two days in a row, right? Giggles and bits, exactly. Two days in a row. Like I said, I'm, I'm probably gonna try to stream gaming once or twice a week. This is where Jesse lives. Men are not allowed inside. But yeah, figured I'd go for a couple hours today. Which, granted, I'm not too far. I'll probably go for just another half hour or so. But yeah. I'm telling you this for your own good, Cloud. People around here love to gossip. They know about Jesse and Avalanche? Nah, it's all good. They think she's an actress. Oh, and one more thing, bro. It's all a game to her. Don't fall for it. You lost me. <laughs> Life's a stage and loves to play. What is he talking about? Guys aren't allowed, remember? You know about the secret reactor jobs? Even people from the I'm gonna try to find some bigger It's the cats. Hey there, bigums, Reggie, Smalls. Brought a new friend to meet you. <laughs> These little guys are on guard duty today. <laughs> okay. Thanks for seeing me home. Really sorry about your ass. 
Oh, what? Yeah, bro. It's kind of weird when you call me that. Hey, don't be scared. Deep down, he's a big softie. It's okay. It's okay. Good job, guys. Great work. Aw, oh, I missed you too. Oh, big Exactly. <laughs> it's like, somebody clip that. <laughs> It's like, that quote's gonna be compromising later, Cloud. Do I think Ian McKellen would have been a great Dumbledore? I think because Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter were uh, starting around the same time, it would have been a bad idea. Could he have done it? Absolutely. I mean, that's no question, but... It would have been a really bad idea. And I'm glad he didn't. Plus, honestly, I, I think Michael Gambon does a great job. I mean, Richard Harris was doing a great job, obviously, before he passed. Uh... Because he'd be playing two wizards that looked very much alike at the same time. I think that's dumb. I mean, it's like, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see him playing two wizards at the same time. Like, for... That would have been weird. Just would have been wrong. Would Richard Harris have been a good Gandalf? No. Not at that stage in his life, no. I think when he was a bit younger, yes. But I think he kind of kind of missed the boat on that. Let's see, uh... Let's go down this way. I've never liked the notion that Sam was the real hero and not Frodo. It's complete nonsense. Uh, it's not complete nonsense. That's, uh, that's not nonsense, dude. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's something Tolkien has kind of said, if I'm not mistaken. It's not. I mean, granted, the it's more. I mean, I might agree that using the phrase "quote unquote" the real hero is not a good phrase to use in that uh, in that conversation like I think I think the word real gets is a word that gets abused but uh like oh you're not a real fan or he's not but he's such and such as the real hero it's like oh well, they're all real people and Frodo is absolutely a hero in it taking on that burden was incredibly heroic uh, but uh no promises but I'll think it over really you will I'd make a mean pizza I'll have you know well but okay Frodo carried the ring 99% of the way but he didn't do 99% of the work uh, never heard of any of that stuff oh you are so adorable you know that you just leave everything to me would Harry Potter have been better if they filmed them Lord of the Rings style film you um I don't think it would have been possible for them to do that because they didn't number one they didn't they didn't have all the books available to them yet plus I mean that would be I mean you're talking about seven or eight I mean it ultimately became eight films but you wouldn't be able to film all those back to back that's that's a basic that's pretty much an impossible task but you kind of I mean you sort of if you want to do Harry Potter like 
as faithfully as possible, like get the ages to look right and go right. I mean, the approach that Warner Brothers is kind of planning on taking now with the Harry Potter show could prove to be the best bet. Now, granted, it's going to depend on how well they do it, but the idea of doing it as a TV show where you can adapt as much as possible and you can follow them year to year, that's a really smart approach. But uh, but back to the Sam Frodo thing, it's... I mean, yeah, Sam... Sam, Sam is essential to that... Uh, Sam is every bit as essential to the success of the journey as Frodo is. Frodo does... Frodo dies without Sam. Frodo does not get there without Sam, period. Uh, Sam kind of does a lot of the physical legwork. He's... I mean... He's pretty dang valuable. Frodo... Frodo by film two, book two... Um, is not particularly useful on his own. Because, now granted, he's still taking on the burden, and it's not really his fault. But without Sam, he's turning himself over. So it's not really accurate to consider him the hero in that. But uh, after that point, but it's he basically, he did something heroic early on, and it carried over, and you had Sam taking him the whole way. Uh, so I actually still probably would argue Sam is more, you could argue more of a hero as far as the work done, but I mean, it's, it's just, it's two very different aspects of the journey that you're talking about. I think there's just, there's more nuance to the notion itself than uh, people just, I think they try to oversimplify it with such and such as the real hero. No, this one's the real hero. How you doing, Jana Banana? Good to see you. Exactly. Look at the size of that sword. I know, right? Everyone should have a sword that big. I don't want things that like adapted anymore. Every time it's done, they make it suck, like Avatar: The Last Airbender movie and the Dragon Ball movie. Well, Harry Potter is not really the same as like Avatar and Dragon Ball. Those are animated, and they're trying to adapt them. Which, by the way, Jalen. Uh, Jana here, uh, her abomination AJ, who uh, you're probably not familiar with, uh, but uh, and myself on Friday are going to be talking Avatar: The Last Airbender, the show, and the show's terrible. <laughs> the show sucks. <laughs> Carrying their work, the ring is the biggest work of all. For decided to go through much more. Mo well, no, he's going through emotional torment. That's what I'm saying. These are very different things they're doing. But like I said, if Frodo is carrying that ring on his own, he's not making it. He's not going to make it. It's just not going to happen. I still haven't seen episode three, but we're going to. Yeah, exactly. I've I've seen all of the episodes and. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're uh, <laughs> not too good. But yeah, we were, uh, I ended up on AJ's channel last Friday and, uh, ended up getting invited on and now we're going to try to make it a regular thing. And I told them, uh, I said, so about episode two, cause that's what we were talking. I was like, so about this episode, uh, this might be the best it gets. <laughs> oh shoot. We gotta go all the way back here. Oh, I, thank you for the invite. That was great. I had a great time. I'm looking forward to Friday. And yeah, I agree. The Harry Potter movies are pretty good. I, they're... Yeah, I, I think Azkaban and Goblet of Fire, I think those are probably the two best ones. Uh, the last one is is the most overrated. It's good. It's a, it's a more or less pretty decent finale, but... I mean, if you go to like Rotten Tomatoes, it has like the highest score, and I'm like, it does not deserve the highest score. Although, I mean, really, other than three and four, all of them have a pretty big. I mean, really, even three and four have their fair amount of issues. Time Turner is kind of a big problem. <laughs> uh, but I enjoy Harry Potter. It's fun. It's it's a fun franchise. 
I don't want to rag on it too much because I do like it, but if I were to break down those movies, we'd probably find a lot wrong with them. She's probably asleep. Well, Star Wars should have stopped with the prequels. Yeah, it's really not this generation, Jalen, that's ruining Star Wars. It's a lot of... Yeah, it's a lot of... It's basically just studio execs and stuff. And people with agendas. Kathleen Kennedy didn't just come around. She's, she's not new. She's been around for a long time. Too long. <laughs> Yeah. You were out for a while. Just walking. Tifa just likes to come into Cloud's room, likes to shut and lock the door. Just getting some vibes from her. Uh, oh, that guy. You weren't thinking of leaving Midgar anytime soon, were you? Hmm. Well, seems this old friend of mine's in a tight spot. A long time ago, I said I'd be there for her. Made a promise. So, I think it's Kathleen is doing this to genuinely spite Spielberg and Lucas. I mean, likely her producer role was probably just, uh, I mean, let's be honest, she probably got her job because she's married to Frank Marshall, who's a director. And uh, her producer credit was probably more like just Maybe Marlene won't be so a kindness <laughs> but now she has actual power and she's freaking ruining everything in her wake <laughs> I'm really glad to have you back Cloud really glad oh, it's pretty late huh I'd like to catch up more but we should probably both get some sleep yeah yeah good night then make sure you're thinking night, of me Uh oh, it's the Dementors! <laughs> oh my gosh! Sleep and dream the sweetest dreams. I mean, come on, tell me those aren't Dementors. No, oh, I, I think, uh... Yeah, I think them fighting over the ring at the end is, is so freaking cool. Barrett and Jesse are holding their ground, but for how long? I don't know. Let's go. Right. Expecto Patronum! Alright, let's see if I can equip... I can't equip my material yet. Many of 
Alright. I think my favorite scene in Return of the King is probably Smeagol's origin story. It's a great scene. It's not my favorite scene, but I think the best scene of Return of the King is the charge of Pelennor Fields, but... Yeah, the beginning scene's pretty great. I already told you all, they're Dementors. Alright, let's go to Materia. Actually, yeah, equipment. Let's equip that. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Um, what's this? Chakra material. What's this material? I thought I had the, uh, Oh, okay, wait a minute, I see it. That's that's the problem. Uh, alright. Let's equip lightning. And then we'll get that. Uh, max HP boost. Deadly dodge. We'll do HP up. Give it to her, that's fine. Uh, let's give her that one. Uh, we'll give her healing materia. There we go. Actually, hang on. Let's also go to our weapons and upgrade them. Let's do some upgrades. Let's see, Enhanced Punisher. Ta-da! Chronicles of Narnia is also pretty awesome. I like Narnia. I think, uh, I think the first Narnia is really good. Second one... Uh, not so great. Oh, okay, this is the sub-core, okay. Magic defense, attack power. Uh, I think Voyage of the Dawn Treader is a little underrated. So I actually quite liked that. Now let's go to Tifa. I didn't dislike Prince Caspian, I just didn't think it was very good. Alright, so she's got 20, so... Yeah, I, I thought Voyage of the Dawn Trader was pretty cool. I liked it. The only thing that sucks is they, they never got around to adapting the best book, which is the Silver Chair, and now freaking Greta Gerwig is in charge of Narnia, which horrifies me. I, I hate the idea of her having anything to do with Narnia. Like, I think she is going to absolutely butcher it. But yeah, the Silver Chair, I think, is without question the best Narnia book. I think it's amazing. They never adapted it, and there's a lot you could do with that book. It's so good. Okay, just wanted to make sure I didn't have any other gloves. All right. I can tell Flee the Dementors! Uh, yeah, probably. I think that's a fair bet. Yeah. I like, yeah, I think the, uh, the battle scene at the end of, uh, Lion, the Witch, of Wardrobe thinks it's pretty dang good. I like it. I thought they did a pretty solid job adapting that book. The other great Narnia book that they didn't adapt was The Magician's Nephew. That one's awesome. That's probably my second favorite of them. 
I'd go... The top three Narnia books are Silver Chair is one, Magician's Nephew is two, Last Battle is three. could be, but I don't necessarily think they have to. Like, you could, but most of their movies, they don't need to be PG-13. Like, like I think uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe in The Last Battle are the only ones that have, like, proper, like, I guess, kind of warlike scenes that I can recall. Potion for Tifa. Ah. Get out of my face. Should have targeted the enigmatic one, but whatever. I think I got some hits on it anyway. Potion. They definitely did this whole thing and very different from the original FF7 because they never had these battles. I'm fine with them. They're pretty cool. Are you seeing Dune 2 next week? Yes, I am. to watch it again I can't just I genuinely can't formulate an opinion yet that's understandable all right we killed it yeah They ran because Cloud had the ugly. Me and my two left feet. Have you seen Pan's Labyrinth? Oh, of course. Absolutely. I own that movie. I've got the Criterion Collection version of Pan's Labyrinth. That's a phenomenal film. Pan's Labyrinth is an all-timer. I adore that movie. Never can tell what weird shit will come crawling out of the scrap down here. Easily Guillermo del Toro's best movie. Like, I'm telling you. Like, Pan's Labyrinth is on a completely separate pantheon from yeah. del Toro's other movies. God, this is so embarrassing. I hate playing the damsel in distress. It happens. What did you do to your leg? Did, 
<laughs> Better than Blade 2? Yes. I think you ought to avoid putting in fine. I know you are. <laughs> You're out, Jesse. Huh? What about the mission? We already sent Biggs in, remember? Don't tell me you're thinking of calling it off. No, we got this. The hell you do. If you need someone to step up, I'm your man. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> we are the worst group of terrorists ever. <laughs> a lot of people put Cameron to turn on the pantheon of great directors. No. I'm gonna need a raise. I think he has an excellent visual style, but uh, he literally has like one great movie and a lot and a few other really good ones. Like Pan's Labyrinth is a phenomenal film, like a, basically a masterpiece. Um, Hellboy 1 and 2 are really good. Hellboy 2 is especially good. Like, that's that's a really good movie. Um, Pacific Rim is fun, but it's, like, dumb fun. Like, it's kind of like 300. It's a very dumb fun kind of movie. Uh, I haven't seen Crimson Peak. Shape of Water is... It's okay, but it's weird. It's really weird. I don't think that movie should have gotten all that... Uh, getting on that attention. I don't think Shape of Water is all that good. It's not bad, but it's weird. And uh, he had some other movie not too long ago with uh, Bradley Cooper in it, which I haven't seen. Hellboy was one of his best. Yeah, Hellboy. Hellboy is really good. Hellboy Two, I think, is really good. Like I, I'd probably say I like Hellboy Two more, uh, more than Hellboy One. I really like Hellboy Two, but Hellboy One's great too. I'm trying to think, what was that movie he did recently? I have to look it up. Yeah, look it up. We're almost done anyway, so Cause it's almost four. I've been on a couple hours, and that was the intention. Two hour today. He actually just did that recent adaptation of Pinocchio. Now, I've heard that's... I've actually heard his Pinocchio is great. Oh, yeah, Nightmare Alley. That was the one that Del Toro did. I haven't seen Nightmare Alley. I've heard it's okay. I've heard Nightmare Alley is okay. I have heard his Pinocchio movie that he did on Netflix is pretty great. So I'd like to see that. And I agree, Gilgles and Bits, it is definitely a shame we did not get... A third Hellboy film. It kind of sucks. But, anywho, ladies and germs, that is going to wrap up the proceedings for the day. I want to thank everybody who joined me today. Israel, Giggas and Bits, Shield Wall, Jalen, uh, Jacob, Jana Banana, Cannoli Sasquatch, uh, who else? Who else? Was there anyone else? Yeah. Don't want to leave anyone out. White Bear, of course. Whitey. Whitey. And uh, Boosh, thank you for joining as well. And love it. Appreciate you being here. And uh, as far as those who join me in the chat, I think... I think that's it. Yeah. But yeah, appreciate you all being here. Had a lot of fun chatting with you all. I appreciate anybody who comes to this stream later. Make sure you smash that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, please do so. We are closing in on 1K. It's going to be great. I'll do like a special stream for the 1K. It'll be awesome. But anyway, I will be back again next week. Uh, we obviously have the King's Court. And we'll have probably one or two Final Fantasy streams to go with it. So until then, good night, God bless, and Godspeed.